Hi everyone, today we're going to uh, continue the, the, the Wordle experiment, uh, but, but today's video is going to be uh, something understandable without watching any of the previous videos. It's really going to be about writing a, what, what I'm going to call a micro benchmark um, to do some performance testing on this key function in the Wordle implementation. Again, the details aren't important, uh, but instead what, what this video is going to focus on is how to use the Criterion library to make one of these micro benchmarks. Um, so Criterion is a really important tool in the Haskell ecosystem for, for writing these because it just works so well. So if we go over to the web page for Criterion, um, here we, we go, uh, the Criterion tutorial. Oh, I should say where I, where, where I got this from. If we go to the Criterion page on Hackage, you can get to the online tutorial here. I highly recommend you read it. I'm not going to be going through all of the details in this video. I just want to show sort of how it's done, and then, and then you can read this page. It's, it's quite approachable on your own. Um, so here we get an idea of, of what we're doing. We're actually going to create a new main function that when we run it is going to give us performance information about how long it takes to evaluate a certain function. Uh, unlike some of the testing that we saw previously, this is really all about measuring time, which is really in the end what we want to measure. Unfortunately, the challenge with measuring time is that it can the amount of time something takes can depend on lots of factors that we have no control over. Um, and so because of that, what we want to do is we want to run an experiment many, many, many times and then do some t statistical analysis on the results to really understand what's going on. Um, and that's what Criterion does, and we don't have to worry about any of that. So I'm going to start by just copying and pasting this example. Of course, we're not going to be testing FIB, so we're going to do something slightly different. Um, and over here, oh, let's go over here, and we're going to be creating a, a new executable in our Cabal file. So I'm going to make a new folder here called bench. And then inside bench, we're going to make a new main.hs because it's going to be one of these main files. Um, we'll have module main where. This is a real program. And here, I we still need to import criterion.main. I don't care about this fib function. Instead, the key function, right, if we look at the Wordle implementation, then the key thing that everything boils down to is this respond to guess. And, and this function is run many, 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 many times in the process of figuring out what's the next best guess in a Wordle game. And so I want to see how long it takes to run this function. Um, whoops. Uh, so over here, instead of looking at fib, we're going to look at, um, whoops, what did I say? Respond to guess, which takes two arguments, the guess and the answer. Um, here we have to supply concrete guess and answer words. So um, this is going to be slightly wrong, and then I'll fix it. Um, respond to guess, peach party. Um, and then I can name it. So this is the peach party experiment. Uh, and then, whoops, bench. Um, What's another word? Oh, aioli and uh, fries. Things that go together nicely, actually. Um, so respond to guess aioli fries. And then maybe what? Maybe we should have two words that are really different from each other, um, like oh, bench and patty. I don't know where that word came from in my head, but there it is. Um, okay, so let's we'll just stick with those. So we have bench and patty. Um, okay, and then this is the group for respond, I'll call it. Um, okay, let's see. Now that we have this main uh, uh, written, um, oh, I said that there was something I was going to come back to, and that's this over here. So we want to think if we look at it, it's kind of strange that I have this WHNF and then there's no parentheses. We would sort of expect parentheses here. So you might want to look at, at this. And we might want to think about evaluating respond to guess of peach and party. The problem with writing it like this is that when we run our program, this respond to guess will get evaluated just once and then we'll have a result. And that's not quite what we want. I want to evaluate this many, 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 many times. Um, so this isn't going to quite work. Instead, the way that the Criterion um, uh, uh, library is designed is that we want to write it like this. So we want to apply every argument to, to the function of interest except the last one, and then Criterion will, will uh, uh, supply that last argument many, 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 many times and then evaluate how long this takes to run. 
The other piece here to know about is WHNF. So what does that stand for? That stands for WHNF equals weak head normal form. And in a lazy language like Haskell, what we have to do is we have to think about how far do we want to evaluate our answer here. Um, right now, this is saying that we want to evaluate it to weak head normal form, which means that we just figure out what the top constructor is of the thing that we're producing. Um, but if, let's say, we were producing a list, this is nothing about all of the tail of the list. This is just, or even any of the elements of the list, this is just saying that the top one, is it a list node or is it nil? And that's all WHNF will evaluate to until we know the top thing. So then we have to wonder, is that really the right thing? Let's look at response. So what does response respond to guess return? It, re it returns this response thing. Let's jump to its definition here. Well, this is a new type, which means that this is strict. So evaluating a response is the same thing as evaluating a word rep. And so we have to look at what word rep is. So let's jump to the definition for word rep. And here we see that it's a map. And if we look at map, we're importing data.map.strict. So if we evaluate even just a little bit of result because a, sorry, a response, because a response is a new type around a strict map, that's good enough. Um, and so now we can go back here. Oh, whoops, wrong main. Um, I want my other one. I want this one. And we have to, we're going to do the same parenthesization here and here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Um, so let's now look at the cabal file and we're going to make a new executable section. So we can copy and paste. And this is not going to be the Wordle executable, but instead the bench executable. Um, and, oh, I'm sure we're going to have other dependencies here. We'll discover them during compilation. This is in the bench dire directory, and Haskell 2010 is a suitable language. Uh, now down here, uh, I think if I say cabal build bench, good things will happen. Um, okay, could not find criterion.main. That's because, well, we need criterion. So let's add criterion. And what's a good... We go back, we can see, oh, we'll say 1.5. Criterion greater than or equal to 1.5. And now we build. Okay, compilation is done with a few errors. Oh, we don't have respond to guess in scope. That makes some sense. So we need to import, what is it called? Response. Um, okay, it liked that. Oh, and now we probably need overloaded strings. Um, oh, and it turned green. Does that mean this will compile? Perhaps it will. Oh, no. Could not load. It is member of the hidden package. Okay. That's not really a deep surprise. So down here, we probably have to just add that this depends on the Wordle library. Um, and then now we try to build again. And aha. Excellent. Okay. So now... If I say cabal run bench, then it actually runs the tests. Now, this isn't really the best environment to be doing this because I'm recording a video right now. And so this, so, so the video recording software is going to be taking a lot of energy from my computer, but it can still run. And, and, but because it's running the test many times, the, the data probably is somewhat meaningful. Um, and so we get, we get some results here. And we can see that there's a time. So that means that respond to guess of this um, uh, this peach party is going to be is it has an average of 855 nanoseconds with a fairly small range. Um, uh, so excuse me, uh, the average I guess would be here. Hmm. Time mean standard deviation. I know what standard deviation is. I'm surprised that there's this time and mean. Um, this is something that I, I, I do recall seeing in the tutorial when I flipped through it earlier. Um, but we can see here, for example, that peach versus party is quite a bit slower than aioli versus fries, which is still slower than bench versus patty. Um, so that's kind of interesting. The other fun thing that we can see with Criterion is if I say output, it will, oh, um, uh, oh, cabal makes it, I don't recognize. If we want to pass arguments to an executable using this cabal structure, you have to put dash dash so it knows sort of when to pass things to the executable and not to cabal. So hopefully this will work better. 
Um, and what we're, we're, we're about to see is that there's this really nice feature in Criterion where we get very pretty output. Um, so when this runs, we'll be able to see all of that. Um, luckily, we're getting similar results this time. That's, that's encouraging. So now if I open pretty.html, then we get, let's make this bigger. Um, we get we get all sorts of nice graphics. So now I can visually see what's going on um, with these three different tests. That's pretty cool. And we can see we can see breakdowns within the test, sort of how often we get one time versus another. It's very, very nice little analysis here. Um, and it gives you more information where we can explore further. Um, so one thing I would like to do at this point is, as we've talked about last time, let's preserve the information that we get. And then I want to make a small change to the program. I'm going to add some strictness and see if that changes the time. Uh, so let's see. So what do I want to do? I want to take this output here and just record this. Um, and we're going to record this. Where did I put it? It's got to be one of my open files up here. Um, Perf.txt. Um, OK, so here we're still on the same commit. Um, but um, but we're going to be, well, actually, I shouldn't say we're on the same commit. Let me make a new commit that has this new setup in it. So if I add, well, I'm going to have to add bench main.hs. Um, and that's good for now. Get add you. Add criterion tests. Um, okay, so now we've made a commit, and now we have a commit hash. So it's not the same commit. Commit just added criterion measurement. Didn't change the actual code here. Um, okay, and the results that we get, oops, I clobbered them in my uh, clipboard. So I just want to take, whoops, too much, too much. I want to grab this here. Okay, um, so now I can compare this to other results quite nicely. So specifically, what I want to do is I want to, oh, I guess I can get rid of that sidebar. Um, I want to go into response and in respond to guess, mm, my guess is that probably doing things a little bit more strictly would be good. Um, maybe in this go function, um, if I put strictness annotations here, maybe that will get us moving a little bit faster. Um, and just for good measure, let's make everything strict. Um, okay, and we're going to get some errors here, and I can probably fix it just by doing this. Add bang patterns. Yes, I do. Um, okay. So let's see. My guess is that that will make things a little faster, or maybe it'll make things slower, but I bet it will have a difference. So now, um, because this is a new test, let me, uh, well, first let me make sure that this builds before I, I commit it. Um, what do I want? Cabal build bench. Um, so it is compiling response. Good. It's not doing any sort of strange caching thing. That would be strange. Um, okay, so we've built. So let now let me commit make respond to guess stricter. I don't want to say fully strict because I'm still using tuples and, and tuples are lazy and maybe I missed a few things. I didn't take a lot of time there. Um, but I still think that we'll see a, a difference here. So let's run this test. Um, and now having run the test, let's look at the results here. So, oh, I should label the commit here. So this is commit. Um, let's look at this. I suppose I could truncate that, but no, no real need. Commit here. Make respond to guess stricter. And oh, I want to compare these side by side. So let's compare them side by side. So this is the, the lazy one on the right and the strict one on the left. So here, look at this. There's a difference. This peach party, 851 to 812, that's an improvement. This aioli fries thing, that made really quite a difference, quite a bit bigger than the standard deviation, in fact. Um, so, And it's worth noting that even though my, my computer is busy recording a video, that's constant between these two different tests. So hopefully that, that comes out in the watch. It would be interesting to do another one not recording a video to see how that affects things. Um, uh, so aioli fries made a big difference. Bench patty 
ooh, that didn't make very much of a difference at all. So that's, that's quite an interesting result in that we can use this as a starting point to understand why the strictness may have mattered and um, uh, sort of what, what we should be looking for in terms of how similar the guess word is to the answer word and such. We're not going to do that now. Uh, the point here is that we can quite easily create this benchmark and start gaining perspective into the performance of our program. And the other thing that we've learned is that those bangs, in all cases, it is an improvement. Um, or I shouldn't say uh, uh, in all cases it's an improvement. In all cases, it is either the same or an improvement. This bench patty, these look um, pretty similar over here. Um, so I hope this has been interesting. Criterion is a, is a great thing to try in your own projects. Um, and I think the next video is going to be a sort of a wrap up on this whole Wordle adventure. And then, and then we're going to move on to, to other pastures. Uh, I hope this has been interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye.